Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to make bread and butter pickles. I grow a lot of cucumbers in my garden, pickling cucumbers, and I like to make fermented pickles. But around this time of year, end of August, beginning of September, they seem to, you know, like the, the plants start looking like they're just about done. They look kind of dead and lousy. And instead of producing pickles with a nice shape like this, which is ideal for, I mean, number one, the, the production goes down. We're not getting as many pickles a day. And when you're making fermented pickles, you kind of have to have a lot of perfect pickles at once. Anyway, I'm not getting pickles like this anymore. I'm getting the odd one. But I'm getting a lot of weird shaped ones like this, right? These are not really good for pickling. Uh, not just that they don't look, they look funny, <laughs> but they don't pickle well. Um, I don't know, I don't quite understand what's going on with that. Okay, so bread and butter pickles are not fermented. They're just cooked and canned and they're a sweet pickle. And as, as I understand it, they're a product of the American uh, Great Depression. It was kind of a way to, you know, stretch everything out and make a meal out of <laughs> cucumbers, right? Where you could just eat them with bread and butter, like a cucumber sandwich. Um, so, the first step, I'm going to get into the ingredients in a little bit here, but the first step is to cut them up finely. You gotta, you gotta have four, this recipe here calls for about four cups of cut up cucumbers and about four medium onions or two really big onions. And these gotta be cut really, really fine. Okay. I've cut everything up using a food processor. If you're really good with a knife, you can do this all by hand. And you know you're really good with a knife because uh, if you are, you can go as fast as I'm going. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is all done with a food processor, but I thought I'd just show by hand. So I mean, I've already done most of the onions except for that one. And now I'll do these. So with the cucumbers, you cut the ends off, just a little bit of the end. I like to cut them in half lengthwise, right? And then you cut them as, as fine as you can get them, cross grain. Like that, see? So that's what I've done here, just using a, a food processor, right? So they're all different sizes. Some of them are long and skinny, but they're all about whatever that is, eighth of an inch thickness, okay? Uh, for big fat ones like this, again, you cut the ends off, cut them lengthwise. Let me bring the camera in here. Just, I'm just doing this in case someone wants to do this and they don't have a big fancy food processor and they want to do it by hand, I'm going to show you how to do it. I mean, let's say you're at the grocery store and you just notice that pickling cucumbers are on sale. You live in an apartment, you don't have a lot of gear. Right, this can all be done by hand. Need not be you know, an overwhelming task. You know, I, I, it took about, you know, just to shred this all up with a food processor, it took about two minutes. And I would imagine by knife, um, take maybe five or 10 minutes. That's not, that's not your entire life. Most importantly, cu cu uh, pickling cucumbers have spines on them. They're kind of prickly. So you just hold them under water and you just rub those off. They come off really easily. So that's all you have to do to prepare them. You're just basically washing them. Also get off any bugs or any weird stuff that's on them. Right, you should be able to do about two at a time, right? I'm trying to speed things up. <laughs> well, this is one, I guess, with two halves. Can't go quite as, quite as fast when I'm doing two, two halves. Okay, but that's all you gotta do. All right, now the next thing you gotta do is you gotta brine these. And you gotta brine them using salt. And for this recipe, I mean, we've got about 12 cups of cut up cucumbers and onion. And to that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of coarse pickling salt. You can also use kosher salt. You don't, probably don't wanna use iodized salt for this. I don't know how much it matters. The, again, these aren't fermented pickles. You cannot use iodized salt for fermented pickles, but these are a cooked one. I don't know if it works or not. Anyway, I have lots of coarse pickling salt, which is non-iodized. You can use kosher salt if you got it. I think the coarse pickling salt is usually cheaper than kosher salt. Now, then you gotta mix this all up, right? You can see there's all this salt on here, right? So you mix this all up. And what you're doing here is you're, you're wilting this all down. You're removing some of the moisture. And this will allow the uh, bread and butter pickles, 
even though you're going to cook them and store them in jars and eat them months later, they're going to have a nice little crunch. They're not going to have the same crunch as if they were fresh, but they're going to have a crunch, right? You, put, you know, we take them, put them in storage, and when you want to eat them, you put them in the fridge, you get them nice and cold, and they're just sweet and crunchy and tangy and nice, just a wonderful, okay? So what I usually do is I do a quick mix like I just did here. I wait about five minutes and then I do it again. Then I put a lid on this, usually a pot lid, and put it in the fridge. And you can have, you gotta, you gotta let it sit, right? It has to go in the fridge uh, to sit for at least six hours. I usually let it sit overnight. And I've even let it sit as much as two, two or three days in the fridge if I've gotten busy and I haven't been able to, you know, there, I think there was one time I forgot all about them and I didn't get back to them for three days. Uh, if you let it sit on the counter, it would start to ferment. But in the fridge, um, you know, it's probably not advisable to let it sit three days in the fridge, but I, <laughs> I've done it in the past, so it's not the end of the world, right? Um, but ideally, you put them overnight and you, you, make, you make, mix the pickles up the next day. Okay, so I'm going to get these in the fridge and let them sit overnight. And I'll make the rest of the video in a day or two. So we'll see you in a day or two and I'll show you all the other ingredients and everything else. So it's been actually a couple days. You know, ideally you do this the next day, but, or if you brine them in the morning, you can do with them in the evening or the next day. It's actually been a couple days, like two, three days. <laughs> these have been sitting in the fridge. Uh, but that's okay, it works out just fine. So here's what they look like, right? You wouldn't want to let them sit much longer than that, but you know, life's complicated, things get busy, you gotta juggle priorities, make everybody happy. It's good to know there's a recipe that allows you a little bit of wiggle room, <laughs> okay? So yeah, it's been a couple days, but these are fine, probably almost 72 hours really, but they're still fine, okay? So uh, the next step, is to rinse these. So all I'm gonna do with this bowl, I'm gonna do it off camera, just gonna fill it up with water, swirl it around, drain it out through a strainer, and squeeze the liquid out. Okay, and that's all you gotta do to prepare these to get them ready for uh, the next step. In terms of ingredients, you need a big pot like this. You need a, well, what is it now? You need three cups of vinegar, four cups of sugar. You're gonna need some, uh, two tablespoons of mustard seed, about uh, two teaspoons of celery seed, teaspoon of turmeric, uh, half a teaspoon of cloves, and uh, mustard seed, two tablespoons of mustard seed. Uh, this is nutmeg, you don't need that, I don't know why I brought that out. You're gonna need about a tablespoon of uh, cornstarch, and I think that's everything you need. Okay, so let's get started here, I'm just gonna Gonna rinse and drain these and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got that all drained out. I mean, as I said, I just filled the big big bowl up with water, swished it around, then transferred it into a colander, and squeezed it a few times, dumped the bowl out, squeeze it a few more times, and so on, right? Until you get most of that water out. It's still coming out, mostly out. Okay, I'm set that aside for a minute. And what I like to do is everything that's gonna go into the, uh, into the mixture, I mix that up ahead of time and get it boiling before I add these. It just, it comes to a boil a lot quicker if you do it without those and there's less risk of it burning or anything going wrong. Okay, so we need, uh, we need four cups of sugar and you know these things should be relatively close but it's not like it's going to fail if you get it wrong. Especially if you go over it's not the end of the world. Okay, so there's one Two, those are probably pretty generous cups there. Three. Oh, a little bit much there. Four. Okay. Four cups of sugar. That aside. Three cups of vinegar. Now remember, we got about 12 cups of the prepared cucumber. Okay, that's the right ratio. There's one vinegar. Yes, I'm not using a liquid measure. It's close enough. Two, people really overemphasize these things. Some things it matters. Certain baking recipes it really matters. Preciseness. Now for a tablespoon over or under here is not the end of the world. All right, vinegar, we got that going. Just a bit of a stir, just to get the sugar dissolved in the uh, vinegar. All right, now we're gonna add our uh, different ingredients here. 
going to have. And, you know, like, I'm giving you ingredients that go into this thing. In terms of the spices and all this sort of stuff, you've, you've got a degree of, of uh, you know, uh, degrees of freedom. It, this recipe calls for two tablespoons of mustard seed. If you don't have any mustard seed, that's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. It's just, these are just flavor things. It'll still work. Uh, it calls for, uh, I'm going to start from the bottom, two teaspoons of celery seed. It's a nice thing to have. Again, if you don't have it, not the end of the world. <laughs> okay. I mean, the main thing is, I know when I do a recipe the first time, I, I, <laughs> I, I watch someone do it on YouTube or I read about it in a book. And then I want to do it right away. I don't want to go to, get, go to the store and buy all the ingredients. So I mean, the, essential, the essential ingredients here are the pickles and the, or the cucumbers and the onion and the vinegar and the, and the salt, right? The cucumbers and the onion and the salt and the vinegar and the sugar. Those are preservatives. Most of what we're doing now is flavor and texture sort of things. Right, so the mustard seed's a flavor thing, the celery seed's a flavor thing, the cloves is a flavor thing. Don't go too heavy on this, it'll blow your head off, so it's about half a teaspoon there. Right, the turmeric is a color thing. If you want it to be really yellowish, add a lot, but then it'll have a strong turmeric taste. But I find uh, about a teaspoon will give it a little color, but not too much color, unless you really want that. Uh, turmeric is a color thing. The cornstarch is a thickening thing. You want your sauce to have a, you want the, you know, the, uh, the sauce that the uh, uh, pickles are in to be a little more thick as opposed to too runny, right? Um, this is about, this is a tablespoon. Add too much and it'll be too thick and it won't simmer properly and it'll burn. So a tablespoon works for this recipe, that's safe. You could, you could amp it up a little bit more if you want a little thicker, but you go too thick, it'll be too sludgy, right? And uh, what's the one thing I'm forgetting here? You know what? I put, <laughs> I put nutmeg in instead of cloves. Uh, just to show how versatile this is, we'll add a little bit of cloves as well. A little nutmeg's fine. You can get it. There's all kinds of different pickle recipes. <laughs> you know, this one here doesn't call for nutmeg. It calls for cloves instead. You can use either or both. All right, um, and the mustard powder. So again, this is a color thing. It's a flavor thing. Also because mustard is a, an emulsifier, this is a bit of a thickness thing too. All right, so, and you don't have to add the mustard powder if you don't have it. <laughs> and if all you have is mustard in one of those things for hot dogs, use that. Maybe you'll use a little bit more than what I've called for here. Uh, I'm sure you could look it up on the internet to get the, the conversion. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, put this on the stove, bring it to a boil, then I'm going to add these. So uh, I'll see you when this is brought up to a boil. Okay, so we got a rolling boil here. And now all that's left to do is to get the uh, sliced up cukes and onions in the pot without making too much, <laughs> too much of a mess. I don't normally do this on camera, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to be neat when you're not filming. <laughs> All right, I think that'll work. Every time I make a video, I <laughs> have to think of the camera angles. <laughs> it does not come naturally. <laughs> All right, I think we got a little bit more over here that we lost in the stove, and the rest will just have to be removed from the area. All right. All right, so we get that down in there. Of course, the, this, is, this was at a rapid, hard boil, and now the boiling has stopped because we added the cold sliced cucumber, right, and onion. Now all we got to do is bring it back to a boil. Okay, so that'll take, I don't know, three or four or five minutes, maybe ten minutes. Okay, so I'm going to bring it to a boil, stirring occasionally, every minute or so. I'll just, I'll just clean it up the kitchen sort of thing after making, the, making everything right. Um, so while that's happening, I'll just keep an eye on this and every minute or so I'll just give this, just move it around a little bit, right? And then I'll catch up with you when this has come to a boil again, because that's the next step. Looking good already. Okay, so we're coming up to a pretty intense boil here. And I'm just going to stir it for a, about a minute. I've already been stirring it before I turn the camera on. Now once it comes up to a hard boil, you stir it for a minute. 
then you can just shut her down. Okay. So there's other pickling recipes where you're going to let things simmer. Like when I make relish, you simmer it for half an hour. With this one, as soon as it comes to a boil, you stir it for a minute and that's it. Now it's ready for canning. So the next step for me, anyway, is to get set up here so you don't make too much of a mess. <laughs> it's easy to make a mess when you're doing this. Of course, you want to have one of these nice uh, funnel thingies. I got this one at a yard sale, believe it or not, ages ago. All right. I find if you have a little towel between the, bring the thing over between the counter and the stove, it doesn't make so much of a mess. All right. And we just start, you know, we give it a stir and we ladle some in. It's impossible to do this without making a little bit of a mess, so just, just get over it. <laughs> All right. It's my advice. <laughs> like that great song, get over it. Um, I'm using uh, quart jars here. You can use whatever size you like. I like quart jars because I don't have to do as much pickling. <laughs> of course, you need a, a pot to uh, can it in that's high enough to cover. Uh, for those um, who want to, I'm not going to do the canning aspect of this uh, on this video. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description box to the whole recipe on my Substack page. And there's a link in that to a um, university extension, agricultural extension on proper canning technique. So just follow those instructions and, uh, and you'll be fine. The trick here is you, you fill it up to the neck, all right? Go a little bit more. You want to fill it up to the neck. Last, last little bit, I'm, I'm like, I just need another tablespoon, so I'm just adding a tablespoon of the juice on top. Okay, so now I got that filled, I'll get my next jar ready. All these jars have been washed and sterilized and heated and all that sort of stuff. Next jar is ready. Right now I take a, a lid, got a nice, these lids have been boiled and sterilized. Hold the lid down and wipe. If you trap water between the threads and the ring that I'm about to put on, the thing, they'll rust like you wouldn't believe. And you can replace the lids, but the rings are just about impossible to find and replace. So you want your ring nice and dry when it goes on. You put the ring on, and to me it's just like two or three finger tighten, no more. I'm a pretty big guy, so I can just do two finger tighten. Just tighten with two fingers, three if you've got really small hands, and leave it on the counter, and eventually that'll suction up. Okay? Um, remember, <laughs> you're just finger tightening here because you're going to put it back in a pot with water, slightly covered, and boil it for, I think it's about 10 minutes. Again, read the instructions that I provide in the link. Um, and then once you've done that and the thing snaps down tight, you leave it overnight on the counter, you actually take the rings off and you just leave it with the lid on. Uh, I had a, uh, a canning and preservation specialist uh, teacher, home economics teacher on my podcast, oh, months and months and months ago, lovely, lovely, nice lady. Um, and she answered every possible question you can imagine about canning and preserving. Uh, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video because it was just she was just such a wealth of knowledge. This was a, a lady in her 70s that had been doing this her whole life and she was just wonderful to talk to. Anyway, let's do one more. This is all stuff you do it real quick. You don't dilly-dally, right? Get it in the jar, right? Heat. Getting everything, everything sealed up while it's hot is essential to the uh, preservation process, right? I mean, we've got all kinds of things going for us here, right? We've got sugar, which is a preservative. We've got salt, which is a preservative. And we've got acid, the vinegar, which is a preservative. Now this spoon I'm using here is not laying on the counter. I've got a little dish full of water that was just boiled that I, I put the spoon back into. Okay, I think that's enough. I'll just add juice now to cover. That's about, that's good. Oh, I'm going to get another jar ready. I haven't got enough left for, uh, 
I haven't got enough left for a full jar, I don't think, so I'll use one of these half jars. Let's get a lid on that baby. Same process, clean and dry. Ideally, don't reuse your lids. Use uh, clean, new, perfect lids. An old lid can be bent from prying it open or rusted or compromised in various ways and it may compromise the storage uh, success of the uh, whatever it is you're trying to preserve. If you're just throwing something in the fridge for a couple days, sure, use an old lid. Okay, two finger tight, that's good. And the last one. Hopefully I've eyeballed this correctly. Remember too, don't, uh, don't waste that juice if you have leftover juice. I'm planning to do an article on Substack on all the things you can use pickle juice for. Because uh, this is a sort of lost, lost art of uh, pickle juice, using pickle juice. Culinary uses, the many culinary uses of pickle juice. Maybe that'll be the title of the article. Whenever I get an idea for a Substack article, I just jot it down with a few thoughts. Okay, we didn't quite fill that, but that's the gist of it. That's enough. We got a small jar here. Maybe a little overfilled. Maybe we back that off a little bit. There we go. This one will be for immediate consumption. So it doesn't matter. I've got an old lid here. This will be fine. This will just go right in the fridge and we'll use it right away. This is the sort of thing, I mean, you can just have it with cheese and crackers, that sort of thing. But also, it can be just a little side dish you have. We had pork chops last night. We had a little bowl of uh, bread and butter pickles on the side. And my kids aren't too crazy about them yet. I haven't got them trained up right yet <laughs> to love these things. I grew up on this stuff and I loved it as a kid. Um, but uh, yeah, we just have a little dish of this on the side and you use it like a salsa, just like a little condiment to go with the dish. All right, so there we are. We're all done. We got about two and a half quarts. I still got some of the pickling juice left in the, uh, on the stove there. Uh, maybe half a cup left over. Maybe that will be something like a, for a potato salad. A little bit of that with some mayonnaise, a couple other things. <laughs> Makes a fantastic potato salad dressing, believe it or not. Um, but um, anyway, bread and butter pickles, a great way to use up your weird end of season cucumbers that don't ferment properly, <laughs> right? It's going to be sweet and crunchy and tangy and salty and zingy from all those extra things we threw in there. It's a great little condiment to have with a variety of different things or straight out of the jar when you're up at midnight watching a movie or something like that. It's <laughs> jonesing for a little bite to eat. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden, have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.